Megan Fox. Yeah, Megan Fox has the story. Megan Fox. Megan Fox. Megan Fox writes at PJ Media. Eat Tucker. Come <laughs> your last. Damn it. <laughs> I cried for two days. <laughs> Megan, thank you very much for that. So, um, <laughs> I can, I can explain the bed thing. <laughs> if you don't show up and vote, up your ass. It's like Jesus going to the temple. He's like, I gotta whip it! <laughs> Get out! Get, Get out! out! The lovely and wonderful Megan Fox. Not that hey. one. <laughs> Not that one. <laughs> Not the weird one that drinks blood in his toe thumb. Megan Fox. Megan. And honestly, Megan, if you don't like it, I'm sorry. She's the devil. Megan. Megan Fox. Megan. Megan. Megan Fox. I've been very nice to you, although I could probably maybe not be based on the way you have treated me, but I wouldn't do that. You've never met a like me. You want to tangle? You want to go? Holy sh- Holy sh- too much cussing on this. I guess we didn't believe it, so we got to turn it off. But I just, it just, it's, it's. You pissed off the wrong woman. Oh my God! I have been assaulted when Megan Fox runs wild on you, brother. She's the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Not for publication. <laughs> the story. I'm Megan. 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 Megan Fox. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. <laughs> Dropping bombs on your news. Mic drop, dead alarms, not a press news. Mainstream spinning, but I won't play that game. A nuclear flow turning at you for motivational flame. Megan Fox crushing all the talking heads as they spoon feed their paid piggies. Gotta keep them misled. With blazing Lego vision, I see it all the signs. Exposed in the agenda, miss these epic rhymes. Intellectual assault on the mainstream. Can burn water, but I'm spitting facts. Top shelf, sorting max facts, reporting news, and not like you make it. I'm award winning, and I don't have to fake it. Megan Fox, an authentic voice, giving the masses a hard hitting choice. That umbrella guy, hammering his song, while Megan Fox writes those wrongs. Now we hit the end of this tune. Then you never knew By the time I press Singulize a proof Break your stories while you're chasing hunches I'm a new type Never pulling punches Good morning everyone <coughs> You think I would have coughed before I went live <coughs> Dang it I swallowed my coffee the wrong way <clears throat> Good morning I am in my office in my warmies. It is so cold in New York. Did you like the doubleheader intros? That's for all of you who say my intro is too long. 
Intros will continue to be long until morale improves. Coming to the program today to discuss the Karen Reed case, which I really wanted to, to follow, uh, but I got distracted by a million other things, is the Broken Baker from Denmark. How are you? I am absolutely doing wonderful. And I uh, really need to work on my camera because that's... I have to fix that side sometimes. <laughs> What's wrong with your camera? It's just, I don't know. It, it looks well, weird. We're all having problems today. I mean, I'm in like four layers. It's so cold <clears throat> in New York. It's snowing again in March, and I've had enough. Of course, you're in Denmark. Uh, what's the weather like over there? Well, uh, sunny for the first time in uh, seven months. No, it's uh, it's getting better now. It's uh, They are promising us that we are probably going to hit the 60s before long oh wow well we did we had like a 60 degree day and then it all went to hell after that <laughs> so and we're back in the 30s and i i absolutely am tired i'm done with it um <clears throat> so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how your channel got started for those of you in the audience who don't know of broken baker um introduce yourself a bit well uh I'm a I'm a baker, and I have a broken back. So uh, because my name is very Danish, uh, you couldn't uh, pronounce it. So I chose that name when I started my channel, and I started my channel because um, I don't know if you know Sticks Hex and Hammer. He talked about mm -hmm. if you're missing content, make it. And I thought that was a really good idea because uh, I used to be a local politician and uh, been in politics for many a year and uh, no one was covering the election on a should we say it was all the hits it's kind of like the presidential election you only have two people you're talking about you never talk about the down ballot people so i i thought well i used to be a down ballot person so i'll do a channel interview them and then talk about politics i did that in danish and got a whopping 30 35 supporters uh even with the the Two, two, second, third, and fourth most viewed videos not made by uh, uh, a newscast on YouTube. So uh, I thought, well, there's only elections uh, every other year in Denmark, so uh, I should do something else. I'm, I'm a longtime fan of Ricadas, and I, I'm a layman in Denmark. That's where we do jury duty for four years at the time. So I thought, I'm kind of a nerd, so I could talk about uh, laws. I met up with Dave. He said, you can do that in English. And I said, I don't speak English. And uh, <laughs> then uh, he had me on once, and uh, I started dual streaming a bit with him. And then I stole Jamie from her, him. And uh, and now, yeah, now I'm just covering cases like everyone else. And Well, and you, you've been covering the Karen Reed case. Now, I really... I had been planning on covering this case, but then I got distracted by a million other things because that happens on with me. And um, and then the what the hails thing just took up all my time. So I wasn't able to really follow what's been going on. But when I saw the facts of this case, when it first when she was first arrested for it, I remember reading about it and going, what? Mm -hmm. None of this makes any sense. I'm sorry. Let me see. This is what the the state wants me to believe. Karen Reed has a boyfriend. That boyfriend is a Boston cop. They go out one night. They're drinking. They're having fun. He wants to go to an after party with some more cops. She doesn't really want to go. She's tired or whatever. So she drops him off. It's snowing. She drops him off. She goes home. She wakes up. He's not there. And she freaks out. Like, where is he? He didn't come home. She goes looking for him. Goes back to the house. And that's where I kind of lose some of the story. She goes back to the house. I don't know if she finds that he's on the ground or if other people, he's already been found, but he's in the snow. Dude is dead. And well, he's got actually, what looks like dog bites all over his arm. He's not, he's not, he's not pronounced dead until he comes to the hospital. Oh, that so he's sort of alive. Did. She he's finds partially him. alive. Uh, he is um, at... I have the timeline. I can. I do. I sometimes do studies. No, I don't. I just uh, use other people's. At 
she begins calling around and, and asking, have anyone seen her at uh, roughly five, five o'clock in the morning? Uh, and um, she leaves the house at around 5.05, 5 5, picks up uh, Jennifer McCabe and um, I never remember her name, Carrie Roberts, who drives with her. They drive back to Fairview 34. And she says, he's there. According to Jennifer McCabe, Jennifer McCabe is kind of the crux in all of this. And runs out. He has a light dusting of snow. Some people said, it's the worst northeastern ever. And uh, anyone from Massachusetts said, are you crazy? It was like nothing. Um, but he had a light dusting of snow on his legs. And uh, she starts doing CPR. According to Jennifer McCabe, because she has a small problem with a search history. Twice she asked her, can you Google how long to die in the cold? Because that's what you normally ask someone when you're trying to do CPR on your boyfriend in the snow. You think, I better check, uh, because I don't know how long he's been out here. So I'll better, better check how long it would have taken him to die. But Jennifer McCabe twice Googles how long to die in the cold. Because uh, as uh, the FBI disclosed, at 2.27, or 2.22, she, she Googled the exact same thing, which showed up in the cell bride. And the state uh, tried to say, well, she had been looking up her daughter's volleyball tournament and used the same uh, tab. So that's why it was backdated to 2.22 instead of 6, 6.30 in the morning. That doesn't make any sense. No. And the FBI said, no, but this this case, and I've been following close to ten cases now in America. How this hasn't been thrown out? How this hasn't been? How the DA turned around and shake her hand and said, "It's on me. I'm sorry. Uh, I shouldn't have done that." Um, but you have so many things that that just, just uh, doesn't add up. And in the beginning, uh, we have the famous uh, abrasions to his mm -hmm. phone, which clearly, clearly isn't dog bites from the missing dog. That when they ask for the dog uh, to test it, uh, it had been uh, sold to someone out of state. So they don't know where the dog is. That's kind of a... Kind of That's a crazy. And then w wasn't there also, like, did the police even search their home? No, no. No, no, and no, then no, no. they had like re renovations done, pulled up carpeting, uh, redid certain things. The dog is missing. So a bunch of cops are at a party. They're all drunk. Yeah. And we're supposed to believe that Karen Reed backed up over her boyfriend somehow, hit him with no, the no, car. No, no, no. You're supposed to believe he, she hit him with the taillight in the back of the head. What? Uh, making a roughly two to three inches gash, uh, giving him cranial uh, uh, skull fractures. There's a slight uh, slight cut over one of the eyes. He has two black eyes. And uh, some describe it as a boxing a box factor on his hand, but other people say they didn't find that in the, in the medical examiner's report. But she clearly only hit him just on top of the head. There's no breakage in anybody. And you have to remember there are three different explanations how it happened. The first is she hit him doing a three-point turn, leaving the scene. The other one is she drove 60 meters forward, no, 60 feet forward, reversed 24.6 miles per hour, because that's the exact time. So you don't uh, the, the little telltale you have in your car that will make a note of it. If you hit something, it doesn't go off. Uh, and then struck him perfectly on the head, threw him 12 feet onto um, a lawn, stopped immediately so she didn't run over him, but still made the abrasions to the arm and took off. And the, the the la kill me. The, and those the latest abrasions is, were not uh, made by a car. No, and, and the latest one is, um, yeah, she hit him with a car. The first theory was she had stabbed him in the face with a cocktail glass because they were... Uh, in a domestic dispute and then uh, they upped the charges against her when they they offered her a plea deal uh, allegedly that she said no thank you to 
then they up the charges to uh, uh, to vehicle, vehicular hom- homicide, murder too. So, uh, yeah. But they never searched the house, the last place he was allegedly in. They didn't search the house. No. They didn't question. Did they question the people at the party even? Were they brought in for questioning? Yeah. Uh, some of them way after. But you have to remember the people staying in the house. One of them is a police officer who didn't wake up and go outside and say, what the F is going on with when they started doing the crime scene outside. Oh, by the way, his sister-in-law is the one driving with Karen. She called him and his wife three times after she called 911. They didn't They didn't pick up the phone. It went straight to voicemail. So they didn't talk to anyone. The hmm. lead investigator is also connected to that family. That's why all of this is absolutely crazy. And the feds are now looking into the lead investigator. Wow. What are the feds looking into the lead investigator for? Well, uh, we don't know. We just know that uh, he is cooperating fully with the uh, federal government's uh, investigation. And uh, we we just had two hearings and uh, everyone was waiting because um, uh, did, did we get to know what was in the FBI papers? And uh, they uh, they turned over I can't even remember three, 6,300 pages of documents, which most of it is secret. So uh, we only know parts of it, but we have confirmed that uh, the FBI have said this body hasn't been hit by a car and that car didn't hit a body. Well, wasn't there also evidence. footage of of Karen leaving her house that to go look for him and she backs into something and breaks her um tail light because i seem to remember seeing camera footage of her backing into another car that night she hits uh john o'keefe's uh, ford edge when she leaves her house and they cl- uh they claim that um well some so there's a lot of this case is really taking off so you know there's always detractors and and some people are saying well uh, she did that to hide the obvious injuries to the tail light what that would yeah. be so that would be look i'm a woman driver um i don't think that i have the ability to cover up a tail light injury i what all right so sarah says the tail light fragments were found on john on the victim it was there were there tail light fragments on him uh yeah at the hospital in his clothes yeah they didn't find any tail lights till later they find clear cocktail glass underneath his body from a broken cocktail glass that they say is the one Karen Reed was drinking from. And she was extremely hammered. Uh, according to them, she had a blood alcohol at one point, between 1.6 and 1.8. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, theoretically, because they didn't, uh, they didn't uh, test her at night, but the next morning when they tested her, they, they, they assumed that she had a, 1.6, I believe it was. Uh, and she she had drank 10 shots. And the other side wow. said, no, she bought 10 shots. Wow. Because they were out drinking. A big group of people were at uh, the waterfall bar. All these cops. And then, yeah, she's a drunk driver. Yeah, but all the other cops who also drank, also drove their cars. Everyone, don't drink and drive. It's a stupid idea. It's really ex- upsetting when... Uh... It's the cops doing it, you know, when you know you're going to go to jail and yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but they don't go to jail. Interesting. They could just do this. So what is the deal with? So then I heard there was all this kerfluffle with um, Turtle Boy. So Turtle Boy, he's got protests going and, uh, you know, I don't know, but he gets arrested some for something. And I didn't follow it. Did you, did you follow any of that? Well, I follow follow part of it. I, I know the the big uh, overhead. I, I talked to uh, Dave has been following it more. Uh, he was charged with uh, witness intimidation. He was charged with... Uh, 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 he had a... He had a restraining order. And uh, he had a lady friend uh, who uh, were really, really interested in him... Uh, to begin with, and then she uh, she had a pregnancy, allegedly, and uh, 
she was called as she calls him up Eve, and guys listen to an old man don't uh, put the d in crazy it's always <laughs> a bad idea we have learned this from the tonsil twins case people we that case is still not over and uh you know it, there's just a lot of things that a woman with a mental disorder can do to you yeah but th this lady calls him up and says oh uh, by the way i'm called for a grand jury they have asked me these questions can you come over and uh even though you're not supposed to uh, come over and we can talk about it and as every man in history since Samson who got his hair cut, he says, okay. And um, <laughs> and they start in a public room and they end up in a private room. And then uh, she uh, starts yelling and uh, says she's going to take uh, the plan B or or the, the next step after plan B and uh, he should be there. And it turns into a whole kerfuffle. He goes to uh, jail for 60 days for uh a and b we can't say the words on mm -hmm. on youtube uh hey dolphin boys here and um <laughs> there I, he is and wait uh, wait i have a i have a sound effect for him hold on let's see the experts in the house <laughs> how are you expert oh man but all of a sudden, that's the funny part. After he got that restraining order uh, from that girl, he's released now. Uh, they had to drop a lot of the charges. She started uh, showing up to court, so he can't be there because he has a restraining order. And they, they are constantly trying to put him back into jail. And that's, again, why he's a, he's a civilian journalist. Uh, he's uncovered massive uh, cases uh, in the local community. But uh, this case, something is just so bad, so he had to go away from 60 days. And then you have the Canton Nine who protested outside of a pizza parlor on the opposite side. The DA calls the police and say, go arrest them. And he said, I'm not sure we can do that. Yeah, uh, there's. Uh, I'll call you back. Then he calls him back uh, later and says, oh, you can use this statue. Because it was witness intimidation standing on the opposite side of the road saying, uh, free can read. It seems like they don't want a lot of public attention on this trial on, and on the situation. That's what it seems like to me. I mean, you guys, people might have problems with the way Turtle Boy does his, you know, channel or whatever, or his investigations or whatever. And that's fine. Different people are. It's same with the with Jeremy Hales. Some people don't like his personality or they think he's too bombastic or whatever. But th the truth is the way these people reacted to Turtle Boy and what happened is really the story. It's really not him. Yeah. It's the way they reacted to him. The government should never be coming down on free speech the way that they did in this case. I get that it's a little unusual to have protests every day outside a courthouse, but if that happens, it happens. Look what happened in the Michael Jackson case. You just have to deal with it. You deal with it. You don't try to silence it and you don't put um, somebody in jail uh, for, you know, alleged witness intimidation if that's not happening. All right. So this is the footage I was talking about uh, of Karen Reed backing up into another car. SUV. And that's the victim's SUV parked. And the defense says that she makes contact, hits the victim's SUV right there, yeah. damaging that back right passenger side taillight. And they also claim you can see, you know, the victim's SUV move indicating At this point, that there was if you notice the rear, rear right tail light, it's shattered from mm -hmm. the impact she had with John O'Keefe uh, uh, four, four and a half hours before that. You can clearly see that back, back tail light is broken at 35 pieces. The one that's closest to us right now. Yes, it's clearly shattered. So uh, that's uh, that's why they found uh, the fragments. Five days later. <laughs> five days later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and, and, five uh, days police, later. Come on. The police chief who has, uh, because Canton Police Department is conflicted out because everyone knows everyone. Police chief, uh, oh, he has a, a great name. 
I wrote it down yesterday. Berkowitz drives by, I believe it's five days or three days later, sees pieces of tail light on the lawn where they they had the crime scene that they cleared. But he oh wait, wait, how could tail light be on the lawn? I mean, that doesn't make sense. Wouldn't it be on the street? I can hear you. You're one of those uh, Karen Reed QAnon's people. <laughs> QAnon. <laughs> no, no. Uh, all the all the pieces of tail light was found on the lawn. Okay. And he he drove by, and he has glasses thicker than uh, my regrets after a bottle of uh, tequila. <laughs> and and he spotted tail light pieces <laughs> on the lawn. Mm-hmm. You know that pesky little thing called chain uh, chain of custody on evidence. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you'd like to keep chain of custody. No one know how uh, the victim's phone got from the scene of the crime to the hospital, where the lead investigator picked it up. No one really. Yes. Yeah. It 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 got it got there. You don't have to think about it. No photos were taken of any of the pieces of. Uh, of uh, tail light other than one piece, a big chunk they found on, on the lawn, apparently. There's no evidence of anything. Police chief Magoo. Yeah. <laughs> they, they didn't cordon off uh, the crime scene. No need for that. They found what they believed was blood on the snow. So uh, what do you do normally? You take st- sterile equipment so you can test it? No. You get some uh, red Solo cups. No, shut up. No, I won't. They took. <laughs> they did took, not use red solo cups to collect blood. They did. Were they from the party? Were they the party cups? Actually, I don't think we ever learned about uh, where it came from. Yeah, they l- used leaf blowers to clear what? the scene. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, this this can't be true. This can't be real. You're pulling my leg. The the worst thing is I I started covering this seven months ago when I saw the clearly not dog dog bites mm-hmm. <laughs> and thought this is weird and and I I have no no dog in the fight I don't care and uh, and then I just just started hearing all of these explanations yeah solo cops were from the neighbors that's right white paint uh, they didn't go into the house to try and get something um, where they knew people. Well, they may, might have been able to get stuff, but didn't disturb the homeowners. Didn't talk to the homeowners that day until later. Still, you're a police officer. You know You know that uh, there's a police officer living at the house. Wouldn't the first thing you do when a dead police officer shows up on the lawn think, oh, someone might be out to get the blue boys? No, no, that's fine. We don't have to disturb them. They were sleeping. I'm trying to get a close up of the not dog bite dog bite wounds. Um, all right, here we go. So it looks like so this is the timeline of the dog. <clears throat> the yeah. February of 2017, there's a picture of the guy with his dog. Then it says in 2019, Albert family registers ownership German Shepherd Chloe. January, John O'Keefe suffers these scratch wounds and unexplained punctures, which look a whole hell of a lot like dog bites. Or I, I have to fight you on that one. It's clearly abrasions from blunt force trauma. <laughs> clearly. Uh, then the defense begins investigation into those injuries in May. And in the same month, Alberts informed Canton Animal Control that Chloe was allegedly rehomed out of state. What? And then it says that the Commonwealth continues to refuse defense access to tissue samples obtained from O'Keefe's arm for DNA analysis. How can they refuse access to tissue samples to the defense? Well, uh, do you have your cray cray hat on? Because uh, this is going to go real crazy. Okay. Uh, most I tissue sample has been destroyed. Or were never taken in the first place. What? Yesterday, the judge uh, asked those lab results that the defense asked for last year that you claim would be ready within six to eight weeks. 
have you turned them over? The lab is almost done with them. They never contacted la the lab until we had a hearing in January and uh, the defense said, we talked to the lab. No one from the prosecutor has called the lab to test the stuff. They still haven't finished. We are supposed to start trial April 16th. They have every hearing ask for it. Every hearing here said the lab is a little backed up six to eight weeks. It's a, uh, it's such a crazy case. Uh, and, and yesterday, uh, they were asking for a lot of phone records for all the cops who were at the scene and uh, who, who absolutely wasn't talking to each other, but they now have evidence. They talk to each other. Um, and he didn't turn it over to their lawyers because he read the instruction that said shall be turned over as yeah maybe you can do it or maybe you can't it's uh it's at your discretion because uh shell this is crazy uh legal vices i hear there's a vices raid welcome vices raiders thanks for being here vices i sent you a link if you want to come hang out i don't know if vices is covering this case or not but i i feel like he talked about it before he um, he he covered the dog, uh, not dog bite uh, picture. He he has covered this part of it. I know that. The anything but dog bite picture, right? Clearly blunt force trauma. <laughs> so interestingly enough, this this um, article that I pulled up that had this timeline on it, let's see if I can go back to that. It says, the defense says wounds suffered by BPD officer on night of death were from dog not fight with girlfriend uh this was in may of 2023 this came out i remember when this i remember when this they were talking about this i have a german shepherd i have seen you know what he can do to his toys etc especially with his claws his nails they leave and to the wood on my stairs oh my god he has destroyed my stairs and his claw marks look a lot like what's on that man's arm. Hey, legal vices. Hey, what's going what's on? What's up? Hi, Hello. I got about 25 minutes. Well, so. I thought you could come and hang out for a minute. So. And, uh, yeah, the definitely not a dog bite. Definitely not a dog bite. It, and, it's uh, so strange. If you want to see them up close, I have a bite. picture. And you could prove it wasn't the dog bite if only the dog had not disappeared shortly thereafter. <sighs> well, it strange. went out of state on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody nobody knows where the dog is and that that's why the, the judge made the order to cough up the information where the damn dog is i don't know if they ever did or not. did they ever tell anyone where the dog I, is i don't think so it's uh the judge ordered them to do it look not at a this. dog bite at all Je jeff yesterday he uh the, the lally the uh, prosecutor interpreted shell meaning if you wanna <laughs> Yeah, because that's clearly what shell means. Yeah, this is this is abrasions from blunt force trauma. Yep, yeah, textbook abrasions. This is crazy. Uh, that looks exactly like my stairs. What my dog did to my <laughs> stairs literally looks exactly like. I should take a picture and put it next to that, and you can see what the what what it looks like when a German Shepherd attacks something. Because um, my wood stairs pretty much look like that now, with gouges, scratches. Um, Certainly doesn't look like canine incisor barks bites there. Nope. Not yeah, enough. nothing at all like that. You know, I'll uh, you, it, this, this doesn't look like uh, front teeth, and this absolutely doesn't look like uh, claw marks. Uh, <laughs> and police German fight. shepherds are definitely not trained to attack arms. <laughs> definitely no. not. Yeah. They never train them with padded arms or anything like that. Wow. Actually, there's a uh, Melanie Little. Yeah, I think I got her name right. An attorney yeah. out of New York as well. She had a, a she had a, a canine, a former canine worker from Florida, and he showed pictures of a dummy arm. That's literally but, what they do in that exact position. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> right, and, he he would have put his arm up to yeah. protect himself. The dog gets up with his claws like this, mouth here, claws here, and that's what she got. And that's how they're trained. Oh. Yeah, that, but that's definitely not what happened here. Oh, it's this is clearly abrasions from blunt force trauma. I I had a guy who always <laughs> from, comes from to a my car chat. hit. Yeah, from yeah. the car hit. Yeah, 
Um, but he always comes in and said, yeah, you're, you're misreading it. So I went in and looked, what, what is one of the things that follows along with uh, uh, blunt force trauma? Subdermal bleeding. And you can clearly see all the subdermal bleeding mm -hmm. around these wounds. No, you can see yeah. that up yeah. here. Yeah. This arm looks like someone had a big squeeze on that. Sarah Adams says, why would 14 officers have him killed with a dog in their own yard? Well, it could have been an accident. Well, I'm thinking that it was probably an accident. In the house. Yeah, not in the yeah. yard. They dragged because him Because they also yeah. completely gutted and remodeled, including the flooring of the basement not long after this as well, and filled in the swimming pool with concrete. Filled in yeah. the swimming pool? What? Yeah, and they sold their, their yeah. family generational home. Below market value. Oh my God. They needed a yeah. change of scenery. <laughs> this makes no sense. Oh, it makes, makes sense. No sense. <laughs> it makes I mean, sense. It, 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 what it has taught me <laughs> is that I don't ever want to go to Boston because Boston yeah. appears to be a place where cops will frame you for shit. And I don't want to be there because this doesn't seem right. Um, Karen Reed, on the other hand, like there were, there's been no real reports of her being having a volatile relationship with John. Like they, they were kind of on again, off again, but no real problems, no previous incidences. And am I supposed to believe, is the state saying that she murdered him intentionally or she accidentally hit him with the car and drove off and didn't know? Yes. What, did, what am I? Yeah. She didn't. <laughs> no, yeah. Yes Wait. to both of them. Yes to both. Yes. Oh my God. They what they interviewed. Uh, he he adopted his uh, sister's kids because their mom and dad died shortly within a, a time frame, and he adopted both of them. Apparently, the niece said that they were arguing, and he wanted her out of the house, or he she wanted something, and they had been arguing that morning about what cereals he gave the kids. And if I know anything, is women will back you back into your only hitting your head <laughs> if you argue about cereals. It's <laughs> well, it's, Ma Megan has been known to back into a few things. That's true. I did back into my <laughs> like, sister's car. Well, what I was saying was that if if their argument is well, the she did that she did that thing to the tail light on purpose. I was like. Mm. No, no. Well, I well, at least me the video as a woman of her driver. going out to look for him, reversing into a dumpster. <laughs> no, it's there, a, yeah, it? she hits she hits <laughs> her, his car. Oh, it's his uh, car. Okay, I thought it was. Yeah. I, I thought I was remembering a dumpster. Well, but, yeah, but and they were saying car. that she did it on purpose to to hide the tail light, uh, you know, damage. Yeah. But I don't think I could do that if I tried. Like I don't yeah. think I could reverse into something so specifically to hit just the one tail light to cover up that I had broken it earlier that I, I don't have the skills for that. I don't think many women drivers have the skills for that. Well, and see, this, this isn't just one of these cases of, of, you know, random, just like randos on the internet uh, going conspiracy theory. Th this, every time she has a court appearance, it's full of people that applaud her when she comes in the courtroom. There are people demonstrating outside the courthouse in favor of her. Well, I feel like this has been kind of like one of these things where the entire town of Boston is like sick of these police officers, maybe, because this isn't the first time Boston police have been involved in some bad shit. Yeah, well, we were just talking about this on the OJ stream, about how Gil Garcetti was the uh, was, was the district attorney during the OJ trial, when a lot of the uh, the potential corruption was downplayed by the prosecution and then the whole rampart division blew up a couple of years later with and you know, the the massive depths of the la police corruption was was, was revealed and this might be the same thing yeah well it sure and, seems like it to me and, and the funny part is uh when you go in and look at all the people involved in it uh it just it gets weirder and weirder. I don't know, Jeff, if, if you saw seen the two last hearings. Uh, Proctor lied to the grand jury about his involvement with uh, McAlberts. Uh, he's the lead detective. Mm. And uh, he kind of downplayed that, uh, how was it, a week before uh, he was having Julie Albert babysit his kids. Oh, but, but yeah, they, he not didn't related. know they, they have They have no relationship with anybody, but that they were babysitting the kids, huh? 
Yeah, and uh, three oh. days after, Proctor's sister said, uh, uh, texted him saying, just saw Julie. Uh, she wants to give you a gift. And uh, mm. he said, oh, give it to Elizabeth. That's his wife. He did interviews at his house that isn't tape recorded with uh, the uh, uh, Jenny from McCabe. Because that's normally how you do it. You don't bring them to a police station where you can get it on the record. Because <laughs> that would be... That would be yeah. strange. I do have a um, a clip, I think, from the most recent um, motion. Let's see if we, we can bring this up. It's only two minutes. It's a news report. Let's well, see. They claim we're involved in a conspiracy to frame her. She's accused of running Look at those supporters. Boston police officer yeah. boyfriend John O'Keefe in Canton. This afternoon, the defense argued for those records in court. Investigative reporter Ted Daniel was at the hearing and joins us live. Ted? Yeah, as we've been reporting, guys, federal authorities conducted their own investigation of this case. I'm TV news and guy. A few weeks ago, they turned over <laughs> the findings, or at least some of the findings from their investigation that spanned at least six months. Reed's lawyers say those findings contain information about calls between people that they claim the state failed to investigate. Karen, how do you feel think today went? Great, great. Okay. Thanks, Ted. Karen Reed, after a hearing where her lawyers went after phone records from four people, including retired Boston police officer Brian Albert and ATF agent Brian Higgins. Wait, let me get this straight. They still don't have phone records from these people? No. Yeah, oh. well, that was, that was one of the big deals from the, the last hearing is she's she's making them she's demanding that uh, the phone records because she's saying the phone records will provide evidence that, of the frame up sure sure but they they can't get that they it, well, the prosecution uh, who is usually the first people to say turn over your damn phones are yeah. fighting to have the phone records revealed uh this they, they claim it's just a fishing expedition and the funny part is kevin albert uh, who's a brother of brian albert who is the one who lives at the house. He con contacted this uh, fella after uh, uh, they got uh, the they they got called to testify and said, uh, "Why uh, why aren't you uh, contacting my brother? Why haven't you talked to him uh, since uh, the affidavits were sent out?" Maybe because you're not supposed to talk to people. And uh, Kevin Albert and Brian Higgins, who is this guy, uh, who were at home sleeping, both of them, apparently made two calls to each other on the night after the supposed murder. They called them butt dials to begin with. Oh, uh, Brian uh, Higgins... That they, they, but wait a minute. They butt dialed each other? <laughs> so, no, it's someone... even better than that. <laughs> First, you have Kevin Al Albert, um, who is sleeping, but dialing Higgins. Higgins, who is sleeping, answers the phone via <laughs> butt dial. Then he, uh, they have a seventeen uh, second, uh, uh, seventeen second uh, conversation, and then they call back and have another twenty-two second conversation. That was a lie. That was brought up by the grand jury saying, uh, we have your phone records. Oh, by the way, yeah, maybe, uh, mm, but i because he testified, I, I have my phone <coughs> next to me. And uh, Albert was uh, having uh, some sweet alone time with his missus. But uh, according to Brian, uh, uh, according to Higgins, no smack sounds was in the background. And I'm not saying he couldn't be doing <laughs> smexy time. He might not smexy be that good. Time. So uh, I'm thinking a butt <laughs> dial and a peen dial is what we're out in here. Well, you know, Legal Vices has been known to yeah. sleep mod for me. Sure. So and, and, and I've done it on to a few people. You, uh, Hayden, <laughs> others. John you know. O'Keefe's body was found Hopefully outside not with, uh... Albert's former Canton home. <laughs> he had hosted a gathering that O'Keefe was invited to and that Higgins attended. Defense attorney David Giannetti says both were questioned in the federal probe about calls they exchanged three and a half hours before O'Keefe's body was discovered. When he was first confronted, Brian Higgins first tried to claim that it had to have been a butt dial. Oh. Uh, that term <laughs> butt dial is used Not what by I'm many dreaming. of the Commonwealth witnesses <laughs> to explain thing. the many calls between them and among them. Assistant District Attorney Adam Lally argued the defense is misinterpreting the federal findings. He says the phone records are not relevant. The facts as recited in, in the defendant's motion, uh, the Commonwealth would... 
oh, this guy looks like a real jerk. Look at this hairstyle. Hair. We've got yeah. the tough, we've and got he, has, he lost that's 50% the wave, of it. That's the wave of justice there. A wave it? of justice. Yeah, look at this. He's, he's the combing garden. it, he's combing it like up and out. Like the nineteen eighties bangs we used to do, <laughs> trying to hide. He's trying to hide the bald spot behind the wave. Do you see this? Yeah. There's the yeah. there's a bald spot behind the wave, and we have like this wave of justice in the front. This yeah. is something. It's, it's got the whole tube. It's like you put like a little <laughs> surfer in there. It's, it's, <laughs> locals needs to get a little surfer riding the wave there, like shooting Imagine the tube. How much time he spends on this in the morning with his gel and his little comb, so we can get it all right, sir. We still see your scalp. We know you're bald. You, you, He's you actually like, he, he, he has lost a, 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 about fifty percent of the hair he had when the case started, and <laughs> his yeah, his blood enough. pressure looks like uh, it's going through the roof. And the people outside <laughs> says he is smoking heavily. Before and after yeah. each uh, meeting, he, he's going to so have a, he's going to have a, a vein in his forehead soon. It's the wave <laughs> of injustice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, MG, uh, for that contribution. Are, are largely uh, inaccurate. Um, it's can, injected with hyperbole, injected with conjecture. Brian Albert's attorney says Albert does not object to turning over his phone records and it. he announced and turn them over. Oh my God. Oh my God. The judge has one of those cups. The judge yeah. is one of those Stanley weirdos. Look at She's the worst person. Wait, when, Brian Albert. when she found out his wife, Nicole, yes, I just, they had I had to back it up. There. So permission to notify. There. The did you see it? Brian she's got the turquoise one. I wonder if she stood in line at Target for that with the rest of the weirdos. But she doesn't oh, stand in line while she went and got a wig. <laughs> God. But I don't trust uh, anyone who buys a $60 Stanley cup. You have to know this lady also was supposed to have rotated off the case, but de denied. They have an uh, automatic rotation principle in the court. And she said, nope, I'm staying. Oh, she rendered her, her uh, summer house to some of the people connected to the case but it's purely coincidental oh my god how come she didn't have to recuse well no one knows each other <laughs> yeah and uh, it, <gasps> as long as we're talking about people sh should we just mention that the court clerk look looks like uh, miss beetle the school teacher from the <laughs> <House of Jerry. laughs> i i like her look that's the wait i've got a Oh, I've got a thing for that. Hold on. I actually have a video clip that will be hilarious if I didn't delete it. Where did it go? Where does, she have my... the, does she have one of those hairstyling things that they used to sell on late night TV, like the hair rings, and they just like tuck it into 500 different positions? Perhaps. God, did I delete it? Oh, I will be so sad if I did. I used to have the Arrested Development clip. Hair up, glasses off. Oh, here it is. Take off your glasses. Wait. Let down your hair. No, glasses on, hair back up. Now let's just get that hair right back up. Well, we have to have the lights off. What about that? Yes, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's an illusion. <laughs> it's... <laughs> oh, God. Speaking of recusals, though, and I don't want to, like... <clears throat> upset anyone by switching topics real quick we'll come right back to this but topic. it's your fault legal vices you're the one who tweeted this out uh, um what but do? in the where was it i'm looking for your tweet on it now because i commented on it today about the recusal request in the um the one of those rap cases that you're covering i don't know which one it is Oh, just just the the the, the high AF witness. <laughs> no, that one. I'm falling asleep, Your Honor. Wasn't it? I didn't. I actually wasn't never me. saw that yet. It wasn't you. No. Oh well, now I'm not going to be able to find it. But apparently, one of the attorneys in one of those cases asked the judge to recuse because he was yelling at him in front of the jury yeah. and uh, refusing <laughs> to just apologize. That you explained that they qualified. <laughs> as the detectives and police. And I asked the authorities, the police, the prosecutors, I made it broad that they wanted, they forced Jeffrey Williams into it. Did you hear you say that? 
Man, um, I get water, huh? I'm so high right now, y'all. I'm about to go to sleep on y'all now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so high right now. What is happening in American jurisprudence? What is going on? I, I, I would guess that uh, this does not <laughs> help the prosecution's witnesses' credibility much. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. And his name is Mr. Bean, too, by the way. <laughs> His name is his last name is Bean. It's literally oh Mr. Bean. <clears throat> so we've got <clears throat> this is one of the most recent articles out about this case. Karen Reed's lawyers allege suspicious contact between witnesses, law enforcement, as evidence of a cover up. So what is this about? Isn't there a hearing today, too? No, yesterday. Oh, yesterday. What well, okay, so that was the one yesterday. Yeah, so Bruce, what happened? Hearing. Well, uh, we found out that uh, those police officers pot dialed each other uh, <laughs> all night long. All um, night long. Um, all then, night long. And then we found out that uh, that uh, Chief Berkowitz, who uh, who's conflicted out, inserted himself in it and called uh, that uh, ATF guy four times in, uh, on January 29th, the day after the murder. And uh, he's the guy who who found uh, the the tail lights after the crime scene was cleared. So that's uh, they want to have his phone records, um, but they are not fully released. And uh, all the witnesses lied about the contacts they had to each other. And Comer will try to hinder it. So uh, they ask for for their phone records. So it's kind of interesting. But I still I mean, love seriously it. collecting phone records. Is literally one of the first thing that the cops yeah. do. Yeah, and this is one like, of the nah, first things. What, whatever you do, don't get the phone records from the suspects. Can, All right, I can I just it. say? Yeah, go ahead. This, <clears throat> you seem like you never ever <laughs> covered crimes before. They got <laughs> they got Karen Reed's phone on the day of the murder. So right. don't get any more. Yeah, uh, <laughs> they already had it. their suspect Jeff. There's yeah, no enough, reason. Yeah. To get anybody else's phone records. Okay, it was Nicholas. It was Nicholas Starro. It was another guy with a good beard. Uh, he put out this clip yesterday of Young Thug's lawyer. And this is great. This is one of the... And of course, I love the judge's response to... The I think bench, you should recuse said, yourself. The judge is like, yeah, denied. I want to move the case. But when the court... It, it gives me no pleasure in saying this. I believe that this honorable court is biased against Mr. Williams and or his counsel. And I ask you to consider recusing yourself or don't do this again to me. This is inappropriate to me. I respect you, but what am I supposed to do? Sit there <laughs> while you do this? I didn't do anything wrong. I did exactly what you teach me to do and okay. the courts teach me to do. All right. But instead, no, no, I got to finish this. Then I get told to to this court, this court says by prosecutor love that I'm not being candid with the court and I'm misrepresenting because Mr. Bean never went to the hospital at Grady on September 11, 2013. And Miss Love has a document on the desk to prove it. I sat right in front of your honor at the at the table at the bench. And I said, I'd be careful what you say. That's not accurate. Miss Love looked down on me and she said, it is accurate. You said, we'll take a break, figure it out after the break. You didn't even bat an eye. Ms. Love said, yeah, I was totally wrong. Mr. Steele's right. He was taking a Grady. If I would have done that and called another member of the bar disingenuous, not truthful, no candor, and misrepresenting, you would have had me yelling in front of a jury. You did nothing. You didn't even ask Ms. Love to apologize. I don't want her apology. I don't care about Ms. Love. But I care about the court. And now if you can walk in someone else's shoes just for a minute and see what you're doing to Mr. Williams, because it's hurtful. I'm not the one wasting time. I'm here every day ready to go. I am not wasting the time. I make a motion to ask you to please recuse yourself. I know it has to be in writing it? within five days. If you want me to do that, I'll do it. And that's the judge will be like, you're right. I'm so wrong. Man. I'll step down. Go to another judge. But this is what's going on, Your Honor, whether you see it or not. You're yelling at me in front of a jury Sit for down, nothing. Lady. And then you won't apologize. And I did nothing wrong ever.
Mr. on these Steele, occasions I'm gonna, and others. I'm going to go ahead and address your motion at this point in time. I'm going to deny your motion at this point in time. Yeah, um, <laughs> so, this is just going on all over the place. You know, it just is. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what's happening, but. This trial is going to take at least two years. Oh. They have 710 yeah, I... witnesses on the prosecution. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, I'm dead serious. 710 so now, witnesses. That's insane. That's just insane. Is the uh so is the Karen Reed matter even set for trial yet? Like we're doing all these preliminary hearings. There's hearing after hearing. A uh, April 16th, they have another hearing on Tuesday uh, on the motions, but uh, April 16th it's a go ahead. Uh so uh that and again they still don't have the lab results, but they, they will be here before trial starts. <laughs> how will they, how do they not have the lab results? Didn't this happen a couple of years ago or a year ago? You know, lab workers, they have, they're kind of, and again, let's put all of this aside. You find a dead cop. What's the first thing that happens in America? Is it, yeah, we, we better look at it at some point where, it's a dead cop. Who cares? <laughs> or, 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 or do the balloon go up? Uh, because they treated this investigation as it was a dead crackhead. They they didn't get the phone of the lady who was in the car with um, Karen Reed until a week later. The, they didn't the, look at the, her the one who did the Google search for how long does it take someone to die of cold. Yeah. <laughs> Three times. She's the and one they didn't, they didn't get her phone either. No, no, no they uh, she, she and she was the one who spotted later. the body in the snow miraculously. And uh, oh, by the way, uh, she had scrubbed a lot of calls. <laughs> the prosecution uh, wanted to to make sure they didn't get access to her phone, but uh, mm -hmm. this judge gave them access to download her records or get the records from I believe it was Verizon. On that night, on that day, they they uh, should have access to that. But uh, uh, she uh, she scrubbed a lot of stuff on her phone, and the police didn't want it till a week later. It's. I like what Sarah says here. Sarah Adams says, "When I came here, I knew who I was. Now I have no idea who is talking about what, what people are laughing at, whose judge that was, and I lost my drink." <laughs> <laughs> Well, she's not going to lose her drink because that drink cup cost her 65 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this judge and her massive Stanley. I seriously, I think that I, I question the judgment of people who buy these things. I question their judgment. I As soon as I see that someone has a Stanley cup, I think poor life choices is written And I do hope that it. is a wig that she got from like Walmart wigs are us. Because <laughs> that, that, that ain't a good natural hairstyle. I it looks like that I have permission to notify looks the like court the 80s. that Brian Albert, his wife Nicole, his son Brian Jr., and Caitlin are not targets of the federal investigation. A lawyer for Brian Higgins says the feds told him the same thing about not being a target of their probe. Higgins' attorney did not address <laughs> this statement from Yanetti. Brian Higgins testified to the federal grand jury that he stopped taking Brian Albert's calls. He stopped replying to Brian Albert's text messages. Judge Beverly Canoni must now decide if the defense will get access to those phone records. The def Let me guess. She's going to say, <laughs> no, we can't have them. <laughs> no, she's been saying. After, after the FBI started looking into this case, she's been uh, very, very, uh, well, not friendly, but uh, not a, as B word as she used to be. Because she, she used to cut Yanetti off every time he opened his mouth. Now uh, he gets uh, he gets he's allowed to speak, and uh, she ruled in favor of them a couple of times now. Uh, well, so Baker it's... brings up an interesting point. Yeah, I mean it's it's always it's never a good sign when the FBI comes in to investigate the investigators. No, <laughs> look and... at my pause game. My pause game is so right on with this dude's Burr? face. <laughs> I, I can't do a I can't do announcer local news announcer voice because they're. Men are all the, the men are always doing like the puker voice where this is what happened in local news, and the women always have that breathy voice. Like today, oh, we're at the courthouse talking about what happened. Then you got that breathy news reporter voice that drives me insane. But sorry, 
I turn on my news reporter voice when I get nervous. So like when I went on uh, Jesse Waters, I sound so stupid. <laughs> but you don't do you do, do you do the breathy analysis voice that the women do on the news? No, but you will hear me repeating every single question he asked. Well, Jesse, you asked whether or not this, that, or the other. <laughs> That's called my, reflective listening. As my brain, as my brain is spinning <laughs> for the answer, uh, you know, I'm I'm just wasting time. Yeah. That's all, just time wasting. Um. Or if I say, well, that's a very good question. Also time wasting. <laughs> what, a, yeah. what a fantastic question that is. Can just I ask another? Go ahead. Just, just another question, uh, because you're Americans. I'm, I'm just a, a Dane from the socialist paradise. How many times have you seen a DA go out and say, none of the people who were in the house has anything to do with it? <laughs> Absolutely yeah. nothing. They are the best witnesses on the planet. You can't, <laughs> don't believe anything. They're cops. Why would they lie? Oh, my God. <laughs> this case is so nuts. It's just so crazy. Yeah. And the more you look at it, the more you're believing, I should have that metallic taste in my mouth. Someone is burning toast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the chat is now just arguing <laughs> yeah. about Yetis versus uh, Stanley Cups. Listen, guys, I just think it's crazy to spend $65 on a cup for to keep your stuff cold yetis are not as expensive as that i have a couple of yetis I have, all i all i all i have is, like is the, is the yeti cocktail glass and it's so awesome why does it keep it very cold oh yeah it, like the ice will never melt for like hours it seems like you keep your cocktails really, you know really what nice. i should use mine to, what kind is that one hydro peak oh how much was this that like 15 dollars so my daughter uses this one. It's some. It was like fifteen bucks. It's like you don't need to spend sixty five dollars on they, a. They have so many different. And varieties. the ice never melts. Why is there like yarn hanging off of it? Friendship bracelet. Oh, you're working on a project. I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I've got all of the the hydro flask sizes. I've got all of those. Yeah, I mean they're a good. It's a good product, right? It keeps things really cold. I should try having my bourbon on ice in one of those. I hadn't even thought about that. Because yeah, I have, have like, lots of like them. little Yeti cocktail, like wine cocktail glasses, mm -hmm. and they, I have like perfect. a, I have got like a little short squatty one that would work. It's just a little. I use it for my coffee mostly, but yeah, I'm gonna try that next time. I'll tell you what, this case is weird. It's really weird, and I, I hope by April I will. If if it is gonna go to trial, if they really are gonna take this to trial, maybe I'll have to cover it because. <clears throat> This is just a strange, strange case. Can, can I make a correction in chat? Yes. Uh, Sarah Adams says bourbon is from Kentucky. Uh, not necessarily. Bourbon just has to be made in America in first in in in, in new charred American oak barrels. That is true. Bourbon can be made anywhere in the United States. That just is true. To, don't don't be getting the alcohol facts wrong, especially during dry week when I'm on the edge. <laughs> You're you're going through dry week? I don't know about this. No, I, I would do that after after I do an F at Friday. I would oh, do for the week. entire week? Yeah, I'd just do a dry week just to, you know, A, detoxify. <laughs> and to detox. Just, yeah, to do a detox and then to make sure I'm not, you know, getting any dependency issues or having any cravings that I shouldn't be having. So I, was, I always do a dry week after F. Well, that's a good Balance idea. the humus. That's yeah. uh, they did in the olden times. Exactly. No, but yeah, but this this case uh, when I started, I, I I think I saw you covered the first hearing, and that's why I got interested because of the absolutely not a dog bite. And then I started looking into it, and and back then there was the Clara who's also in chat, and Turtle Boy, of course, me, and I think LTL was started at that point, uh, covering it. And the last hearing, I think. Uh, Eight or nine people live streaming it. It's really, uh, it's it's the new uh, JD uh, kind of thing. Everyone is kind of jumping in on it right now and saying, "This this seems too weird to be true." It's uh, it really does seem too weird to be true, and mm -hmm. I I would imagine jury selection is going to be pretty interesting. I mean, this case has gotten so much press coverage. How could there be people in Boston who haven't heard about it? No one, and that's that's funny because you had that DA Morris go out and say, absolutely believe all my witnesses. <laughs> right. But but at the same time, he is claiming witness and uh, witness intimidation when people are, are protesting and hanging banners from uh, uh, the highway bridges. 
saying free care and read. That's a witness intimidation and jury tampering. Because the I, I'm not wow. again. I live in a socialist paradise, so we don't know the need any freedom. But <laughs> Sarah Adams, I'm I'm so sorry. I have to correct Sarah Adams again. <laughs> Just what did she K- say? K- Kentucky has KFC and bourbon. Let them have it. That's Fun awesome. fact: the oh, world's no. the <laughs> world's first KFC is in Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I visit the mother. Quit taking every things year. from Kentucky away from my homo. <clears throat> That's my homo you're talking to. Sarah says, Jeff, send this to Megan. Thanks for streaming. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, fun fact the, the world's first Kentucky fried chicken KFC is in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'll say that Kentucky fried chicken is delicious. It There's, is. I don't it's think it's even anyone more delicious in Korea. <laughs> Korean is, KFC is way better than US KFC. Yeah. Really? Why is oh. that? I don't know. They just use healthy chickens and like the workers actually give a shit. <laughs> well, I know that they're a lot cleaner in Korea. I have watched kitchens yeah. operate in Korea on YouTube and I can't believe how clean they are. Yeah. <laughs> washing Sorry. the washing. I've of derailed everything. your stream as per usual. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I like talking about fried chicken. I haven't had fried chicken in a long time, but KFC has really good fried chicken. I never had good food served at a KFC. We have two, I think we have two restaurants in Denmark. Wow. And the first time uh, we got those chicken popcorns for the kids, they were. Oh, those okay. are terrible. Was, Don't get those. No, you got to get the bone on chicken, the bone in chicken. Yeah, but I, that that was actually the only thing that was worth eating, eating because. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. We don't do much uh, fried chicken. It's not a big staple of <clears throat> our diet. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What if it was pickled? If it was pickled, would you eat more of it? <laughs> no, that that that's Nick because those sweets they're weird. That's Nick. <laughs> so you pickle uh, it first and then you yeah. fry it. It's really good. Yeah. Unhung it, Hero says sweet. a stream about something other than the hails. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, Jeremy did a toy reenactment yesterday of the Ohio hearing part one that is absolutely hilarious. The only thing he was missing was my Lego courthouse. And we should have had my Lego courthouse and Valhalla's uh, trailer to do the reenactments <laughs> from, and then it would have been perfect. But uh, I am going to, we're going to have to watch that soon. I don't know. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow, but it's pretty good because the judge yells at Lynette. Do you know about that? Did, did you see, did you watch this, Jeff? Did you see it? Uh, no, I didn't. But before you get there, Ghostery says, incorrect, Jeff. Colonel Sanders' original restaurant was in Corbin, Kentucky. Yes, but it was not called KFC. What happened is he was going around the country giving samples. He went to Salt Lake City and met up with Harmon, uh, Mr. Harmon, who ran Harmon's restaurant. And he said, you should create a chain out of this and create franchises. So they created the brand Kentucky Fried Chicken. And the world's first Kentucky Fried Chicken was established in Salt Lake City, Utah. It wasn't the world's first harlan sanders restaurant sorry just had to don't mess with me in my salt lake city utah and kfc those are two things i know a lot about so here's a, before, a yep go ahead brooke baker this is megan telling before me this stream up. is over kentucky bluegrass is actually from tennessee and the racehorses yeah. don't run in the in the kentucky jeff will destroy that state <laughs> all the state pride is just all right. Not that this fried these fried chicken wars aren't fun and uh, interesting, but I, I have to give you a sneak peek of the Ohio court process done in toys by Jeremy Hales. I can try. Just go. Oh, I just missed the best part. The packet that I received is not identified. I mean, it says Lynette Preston. I don't know if there is another packet. I did not receive any other packet. I can, can you please remove the child, please. We do not have children in the courtroom. I can try. Do we need to reset this for a time that you can find appropriate child care? No, ma'am, I have no, I have no other one that can, not sure she has a medical condition. <laughs> okay, so this court is not going to conduct this hearing. Going to, John is going to take her back. Oh, no. Okay. She's not here. We're in our chamber. Okay. Our RV where we live. Okay. 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 Okay.
I will address you each separately then when I am ready to speak with Mr. Cook, then you can trade places with him. All right, so this is case again, 3595. So prior to going forward with the full hearing, I think Jeremy has discovered something here. We have figured out how to make audio only court interesting and hilarious. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Isn't this so funny? The judge yells at her multiple times. We finally get a judge yelling at Lynette. It's so good. Oh, that's beautiful. It, it's again, that judge kind of like on the Bevin and uh, Karen Reed is how the F did they get that job and how did they keep it? <laughs> it's uh, but that's uh, that's law. You can always fail upwards when uh, you work for the public. Yeah, I wish I had thought about doing this toy reenactment with the Lori Vallow case. We listened to one hearing on that and I was like, oh, I've, I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I can't do this. Well, listen, like trying to live stream just an audio hearing is very difficult. Very hard. Very hard to pay attention. In fact, I was um trying to go, I was trying to listen to the Supreme Court arguments in uh, Murthy v. v. Biden. And what they're missing is putting up who's speaking. Because they're not identifying each speaker as they speak. And so it's like, well, which justice am I listening to? Is it Sotomayor or is it Kagan? I can't tell the difference between these two. So you got to give, you know, put up something that says, why don't they just turn the fucking cameras on? Is it that difficult? I'm sorry, I'm ranting no. about something completely unrelated. Well, can I, can I continue one rant and then I promise I'll leave? Is it about Kentucky? Yes. But oh. I, no, it's a, it's about KFC specifically because <laughs> Sarah's going. No, it isn't. Now I, I just right, hang fine. on here. Fine, but, fine. I promise. I, okay, we're gonna make this a KFC a KFC stream. We're, we're uh, just gonna have to maybe watch some we, chicken we, we frying We have to put this background. to rest. Uh, if you would, if you would do me the honor of bringing up the screen here. Oh Lord. <laughs> this is the K this is the global KFC.com. This is the official Kentucky Fried Chicken KFC website. 1890, humble beginnings, Harlan Sanders born. 40, top secret, he begins perfecting his unique blend in 1939 of 11 herbs and spices. His iconic white suit. 1952, first franchise, the first Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise opens near Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> Before that, it was called like uh, it was called like a Sanders Sanders Chicken or something like that. But the very first restaurant to have the name Kentucky Fried Chicken was in Salt Lake City, Utah, right there on the official KFC website. Done. Never talk about it again because I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we got that worked out. Me uh, those too. Of you in the locals chat, the chat does appear to be working for me. I hope it's working for you guys, but if not, let me know. Locals is doing troubleshooting on this, they say, this week. Uh, Sarah, I just showed you where it's on KFC said it. She said, Google it. Megan, my hands are up. Do me a favor, <laughs> Megan. Go to Google. Go into Google and type world's first KFC and see what comes up. All right, fine. Just, just world's do it. first KFC. My, 1952, Salt Lake City, Utah, 1952. Suck it. Of course, you're gay, so never mind. You wouldn't suck it. <laughs> <clears throat> there you go. Oh, my. We are just going to have, uh, it's uh, just going to be a, an all-out chicken brawl. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to leave because I'm right. <laughs> Brooke, to, Brooke Page, I've learned so much about KFC today. <laughs> As I say, you know, don't, 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 don't mess with KFC in Salt Lake in my book. I know. Oh my God. I cannot believe the chat cares about this so much. They are literally, they are literally arguing about KFC now. You know, you guys will argue about anything, anything. <laughs> Give chicken a whirl. Hey, Joe. <laughs> chicken a whirl. Yeah. This was, this was my fault is he did have a restaurant in, in Corbin, Kentucky, but it was called like Sanders family restaurant or something like that, or Sanders family chicken restaurant. I'm done. They're saying the franchises don't count. That is what KFC is. The first franchise is the original. That's the mothership. <laughs> that's how that works. 
The first place the first to have franchise. the name KFC. Salt Lake City, Utah, yes. Will be the first franchise yes. restaurant. Yes. The, the right. first McDonald's was I'm leaving. Also. I'm going to leave because I've, what I've you, derailed what you doing? Chat. What do you have coming up this week, Jeff? Uh, tomorrow we're going to do the unexplained. We're talking about uh, Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, and other cryptid beasts. With Flux hey. and Danny on direct. That sounds fun. Is that at it 9 a.m.? Uh, 8 p.m. Friday. Oh, 8 p.m. on Friday. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good to know. I, uh, tomorrow's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. All day. Damn, this week. I, yesterday I was in bed all day, so I lost a day. It went fast. Um, I apologize and for I derailing am, your stream, I am Megan. still in pain, so I'm actually going to end up wrapping this up soon, too. Uh, Broken Baker, what is going on with you? What you, What's going on with you in the coming days or hours? Oh, I don't. Uh, my boss gave me. Bye, Bye Baker. Baker. Bye. Sorry. I you apologize, too. Megan. Can you ever forgive me? Uh, I love you, Jeff, and all your weird chicken trivia. <laughs> Notice she didn't say, yes, I forgive you. <laughs> I'm, I don't need to forgive you. There's nothing okay. to forgive. You may derail my stream any day, and you know it. So hard not to say railed jokes, but let's go. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. That's what she said. Giggity, giggity, giggity. Uh, <laughs> so what do you got oh. coming up, Baker? Uh, I'm, I have, I don't, this has been a weird week because I've been in court myself and stuff. So uh, I haven't really, and I've been waiting uh, to talk to you. So uh, I haven't planned anything. So, but J Jamie will yell at me and I will stream something. Saturday uh, <laughs> nine nine a.m. I'll have my uh, stab your day show, show, which has absolutely nothing to do with stabbing. It's just uh, it started it started up like uh, rounding off the week, and now it's just uh, me and uh, people making fun of stuff. Well, that sounds like what I do on a regular yeah. basis. Marcus King, thanks for the super chat. Says thank you, Megan, and you're welcome. I don't. I guess for covering Karen Reed, probably. Auntie Shelley's Kitchen says this case has corrupt corruption written all over it. The charges should be dismissed. Yeah, I I don't think there's enough evidence to convict her when you didn't even interview or search the house of the people on whose property he was found. Uh, no thanks. Jill M's thanks for the super chat. In my day, it was called a flask. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, Tracy Fagan thanks for the super chat. Says I'm catching up. Is this is the dog in the pool? Oh my God! Maybe. No, no, no. Uh, my co-host Jamie cries when we say that. It's in Mexico. With uh, I don't know if you know the Zachary Anderson case, uh, J the Gutierrez guy who's missing in that case. <laughs> they are at a beach in Mexico. They are having so much fun. Oh my God! I was just wondering though, why would yeah, they, it's why in, would they fill the pool in with cement? Oh. We didn't talk really about that. They redid the floor in the basement that they just redone right. a few months mm -hmm. before. Maybe uh, Doggo is uh, kind of like uh, Gotti, a part of the foundation now. Oh, my God. But why put cement in the pool? No, I think the pool was just filled with earth, but they redid uh, the concrete in the basement. Okay, but filling in the pool, weird, weird. That's a selling point, a pool. Yeah, maybe that's why it went for under... Uh, Market Under value. market value, Sarah Adams, thanks for the super chance. Says sock puppet court, exactly. So, I think we're on to something here. Sock puppet court would be highly entertaining. Vince Clor, though, thanks for the super chance. Says Kentucky bluegrass came from Indiana. <laughs> this isn't going to end, is it? And Sarah Adams says, Can we do a Debbie Gibson or Tupac stream? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, but are either of them on trial? No, Tupac's dead and Debbie Gibson, whatever happened to her? I'm not sure. And yes, Rumble, I see you over there. I have the chat open. Uh, Tom Enterprises wants to know whatever happened with the murder case from Henrietta, Oklahoma murder case that happened last year. The guy was released early and then murdered like five kids and himself. I don't know. I don't know about that case. That sounds horrifying. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have no oh. idea. Now uh, we talked about soccer. I did the the accident reenactment in uh, Lego. Once oh yeah! So, Somebody uh, told me that. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that reenactment? I don't. I have a. I I, I was just doing the show. I'm thinking about maybe recreating it because uh, what my uh, few minutes always turns into two and a half hours. <laughs> so uh, 
why how long did it take where's this drop the link to the stream it was in i want to find it that would be oh, funny to end on the lego reenactment well, I'm just talking a lot about uh, what I see. Uh, I read the affidavit and tried to uh, put it together, but uh, it makes no sense because two witnesses standing right next to each other gives a di different ex uh, explanation of what happened. So uh, it's it's kind of weird, but it's a good kind of weird. But I, I, it's just me ranting for I think two hours. So uh, <laughs> it might, uh, well, I'm I'm really good at not saying a lot in a very long time. I don't know why I'm <laughs> that weird. The chat tells me it was a really amazing reenactment. We have to pull up at least a little bit of it. Hold, please, while Broken Baker looks for it. I think it's this one. That's the big problem, this. I've done this so many times. <laughs> You've done Lego reenactments lots of times? No, I, I just done this one, but uh, I've done, I think, 10 videos on, on this case, so... <laughs> it's hard to find. <laughs> yeah. You should definitely pull, pull it out and redo it and put it in the... Um, like, do a separate video of it. That would be a hit. Yeah, maybe see. I should just uh, do it shorter. All right, let's see. It's uh, so, roughly 20 minutes in. Okay. All right, let's see. Here we go. We have whiteboard. Oh, I see. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this is uh, how... Stop making noises. <laughs> it's, it's because I was using my phone and it replayed the sound. I'm, here. I'm not a good streamer. <laughs> Way to sell your like channel, Baker. Hey, guys, go subscribe. I'm not a good streamer. but Sorry, this is uh, a low-key production. <laughs> but, uh, I, I, my mom taught me honestly. I like the, you... the drawings and the Just American flag. <laughs> I'm very impressed with that. So this is... That's why I can hear myself. Um, because I put my phone down here so we can watch it close up. But this is the house as described um, at Fairview 34. You have the house up here. There's a front door here that they don't use. And there's a door connecting the garage and the house where people normally uh, went in. This is the driveway. This should be Jennifer McCabe's car because she uh, she claims she was parked in the driveway. Um, and her testimony is what we will be looking into today because we know at roughly six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> John is found near the flagpole. They should use this in court. And a fire hydrant. <laughs> Face up, lying in the snow, not covered by snow. His uh, upper body was free. There was bleeding around him. Glass was found beneath his body, um, which is, is supposed to be a cocktail glass he took with him from the bar. When Jennifer McCabe um and I shouldn't use that finger. Uh Karen Reed <laughs> and I can't remember the last Jennifer um <laughs> arrives at the house uh this morning. <laughs> they find him here. Two of them start CPR and Jennifer McCabe calls 911. This is the facts that we know uh about how they found him. This is all very understandable. Uh, well, uh this, 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 I'm I visually I learning. I personally so feel I, like this should be. I'm learning so much. I feel like this should really be what how they do it in court to explain yeah. it to the jury. The I, I always uh, like to see things to understand them. Me too. Me too. I think this is a fantastic idea. I'm now. I feel like I understand this so much more. And when she goes to her vehicle, she receives a text message from Mr. O'Keefe's 
asking where to at 12.14 a.m. This is just a replies uh, at leading to fast Fairview, forward? but there's no path cleared. There's snow all over this place. So envision stuff like this, uh, and you use some combination of what <laughs> happened. So she sees the car moving up here. Here we go. She sees the car moving up here and then move away. That's uh, important to uh, one of the the theories out there. But uh, again, I'll, today I'll start, stick with uh, what's in the court document so far. Um, and then, of course, at 4.53, uh, uh, Ms. McCabe stated that she received a phone call from Ms. Reed and um, uh, where she was looking for uh, uh, John. I'm in agreement with Danny. The side camera angle uh, is uh, really uh, good uh, too. The two different angles are perfect. But she uh, doing that <laughs> um, that phone call, Ms. McCabe also later informed the defendant she had seen them in Ms. Reed's vehicle in front of the home of Fairview. So that must be, have been at this place. Good morning, Erin. Good morning. That's the worst thing about it. Uh, that's why I should just record a video instead of me saying, oh, hey, how are you doing today? Oh, Sarah's in chat. How are you, Sarah? <laughs> Two and a half hours later. Oh, and there's a car moving in. And then there's a car moving. But you know how when Five the hamsters start running the later. wrong way, uh, yeah, the hamsters start running backwards. You just, what? This is a very long reenactment. Look, you're still going in 58 minutes. I told going. you it's two, two and a half hours long. I was just making a shot. <laughs> well, he's supposedly. This is good though. It's this is uh I this would be well worth watching. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat so that you guys can go and watch this reenactment. Uh and also subscribe. If you have not subscribed to Broken Baker, you should. And here is the link to that. Also, his channel link is in the description of this video. So if you're watching on the replay and you're not following the chat, make sure that you do go to the description and find his channel. And the reenactment is uh, called Karen Reed Case Reenacting States Claims. This is a great thing. This is really good. Yeah, but I, I did the reenactment and yeah, just skip ahead because I talk a lot. Uh, I'm, I'm very interactive with chat, uh, sometimes to my own detriment. But uh, <laughs> I, I, it gets a little crazy when I try to describe how he was hit. And, and maybe the last hour and a half is me going off to all the different theories. And uh, and maybe someone pops in and tell me I'm an idiot because that always happened when I do Karen Reed, um, uh, Karen Reed stuff. There's always someone uh, who's there, but but did you know that uh, Turtle Boy uh, once uh, bought uh, two big pieces as KFC? It's not about <laughs> Turtle Boy. It's about there's always someone who who wants to talk to Turtle Boy when you do it. I know, I know, and and yeah, it doesn't make any difference to the facts of the case, though, does it? There's still problems with the facts yeah. of the case. Rogue Mama says, Megan, you can buy customized Lego people. I really need one for the Turtle Queen. I, I need one that has like long braids and is super skinny. Do they make skinny Legos? They're all like no, the same they... square shape. <laughs> Baker's got an entire collection. Like me, I've got my stacked up bought, Legos behind me. I actually bought, uh, because I was covering uh, the Daddy Dom case, and they, they uh, went to Paris when they were younger. So I bought a Dominatrix Lego when I was at the Legoland, because uh, he, they were having a, a long-distance SM relationship. It was a wonderful case. Especially when they started uh, reading their text messages to each other with the most. It was a black lead detective. And I thought, I think he sat there and thought, that's why we don't like white people. <laughs> it was, he was, yes, I want to withdraw. And, and the, the prosecutor was reading the lady part. It was, oh my God, it was cringe. 
Oh, well, there's a lot that's cringe about a lot of this. And uh, I'm glad that you're on it. I'm glad that you're following it. And I'm, I'm glad I had a chance to get caught up on it today. I am unfortunately uh, going to cut the stream short today because I need to get back to bed. I'm having a hard time keeping my neck up. Baker, you'll understand since you have a broken back, I have a pinched nerve or something that's really flared up in the last two days. And I haven't, holding my head up is like a, it's, it's a, it's a problem. Let's just put it that way. It's a problem. Yeah. I need to go back to bed. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be back tomorrow, you guys, because if the pain doesn't let up, I will probably not be here. And I may take the weekend to recover and try and get some relief from whatever the hell is going on in my neck and shoulder. So with that, make sure you get Remember, over to Broken... Yeah, go ahead. You Use uh, hot instead of cold. It really helps me. I've been doing both, but mostly warm, mostly hot. Um, yeah. Because I, I, I was doing some ice first because I, the inflammation was pretty bad, but it doesn't feel as good as the hot does. So... I'm going to have to go lay back down on my heating pad. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. But this was a lot of fun. I'm glad that we were able to connect, and I'm glad that we were um, able to catch up on this Karen Reed case. And I'm trying to pay more attention to it and trying to get more, more content out there about her as well. Um, MG, you know darn well that your night streams are during my bedtime. Chances of me being available on a Friday night are pretty bad. But I might be able to call in from bed. Who knows? That I can and do you, usually. You will have a night stream on Saturday. I do have a night stream on Saturday. That's right. Because we have the Legos on Saturday. So I have to get better for that. Um, so, yeah, that means I need to go and lay down for the next couple of days. And hopefully it will be better. All right, everybody, you take care. Make sure you get over to Broken Baker's channel and get subscribed and make sure you like especially watch that reenactment you should go do that right now uh let's see is there anybody streaming that i can send you over to right now let's see mm. oh nick is streaming the young thug trial so i'm going to send you over there and you go tell nicholas that i said uh hello and I will see you guys when I see you. Pay attention at meganfox.locals.com and you'll know when I'm streaming next. Definitely Saturday night, though, for the Lego stream on MLS. Check that out. See you guys. Thanks, Baker. <laughs>